So I've had the B-Link EQ13 in my possession since June 6th, and I started the unboxing and review process within just a couple of days of receiving the device. Then I had some back and forth with B-Link regarding some issues that I was having with the device in my possession. This went on until June 20th, and at this point, I genuinely wasn't sure how I was going to handle this device or the video that you're actually watching right now. Look, initially, I was excited to take a look at it as it's an Intel N200 device with two 1 gig LAN ports, a few I.O. ports, including two HDMI ports, and a TDP of only 25 watts. But my excitement died down a bit after I unboxed it and got to the desktop. But look, I am actually getting ahead of myself here, so let's take a look at the unboxing, and then we'll come back and talk about some of the issues that I ran into with my review sample. Now, before we get into that, though, I do have a quick disclaimer. B-Link did send me this device as a review sample. No money changed hands, and they will not see this video before you do. Now, that said, again, I was in contact with them a few different times to try to troubleshoot some things, but again, they're not going to see this video before you do. One other quick little thing here, uh, you can skip this if you want, but if you'd like some behind the scenes stuff on this project and some others, be sure to join my Patreon for as little as a dollar a month as I'm going to try to do more behind the scenes stuff as more of these projects come up. But with that said, let's jump into the unboxing here just real quick. Okay, so this just arrived via DHL, um, and at first I wasn't sure what I was actually getting. I wasn't necessarily expecting something today, but this says EQ on it. Uh, it also says uh, EQ uh, right there as well, and it says navy blue. Uh, if this is what I think it is, I thought it was gonna be clear, but maybe it is, we'll see. Um, and then if we flip it, if we, there we go, if we flip it there, there, it says B-Link. So this is obviously a mini PC from B-Link. If we flip it over, Upside down, let's flip it this way. There we go. EQ specifications, Intel Ultra like N200 processor with 16 gigs of RAM, 500 gigs of storage, Wi-Fi 6 with a one gig LAN port, and then our power requirements and that sort of thing. Uh, I actually haven't opened this yet. It's still, got, it's still got the original plastic on it. I wanted this to be a surprise for all of us together. So now, now I just gotta figure out how to, to get into this more easily. Yes, oops, geez. Sure, there we go. To do like so. There we go. Let's get this out of there. Oh, it's a sleeve. That's what it is. That's why there was no real seam on the bottom like I was expecting here. So let's flip it back over. Very plain box on the inside. I mean, I guess that helps them keep their um, their their packaging costs down. They've only got to print. Only got to print the sleeve. So that's fine. Let's go ahead and pop this open. Like so hey. This is not what I thought I was getting. Again, the one I thought I was getting, I thought it was gonna be a different color. Uh, oops, this way, there we go. Again, it says EQ right there in the corner. Uh, during the boot process, if you can't log into your personal account, turn off Wi-Fi and LAN, then skip the option. So this is how to uh, skip the requirement for Windows 11 Pro to have a, a Microsoft account on it. They tell you how to do that right there. I actually really like that. Um, so let's let's pull that out and set it aside. And then we get a little a little thing here, a little card. It just says hello. Um, yeah, can you even read that? There, there it is. Hello. Um, so that's that's there. Um, I don't know if that's supposed to be a sticker or what, but all right. A little box or a little box, a little 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 thing here for instructions. Of course, we're not even going to bother with that. Uh, we've got an HDMI cable. Appreciate that. And um, interesting. There's no power brick, there is just a power cable. So, I guess we're gonna to have to investigate that a little bit. We'll flip this over, I'll be damned. All right, so, this is interesting. Um, just from what I can see, I know it's kind of hard to see through that, probably for you guys, but let's go ahead and get this open. Well, that was all right. Cool, so here we are on the front, we've got a USB uh, with an audio port. Uh, I think that's a reset, USB-C, Power button feels good. Nothing on the sides, I don't think, nope. And then on the back, we get some more USBs, a couple of HDMIs, a couple of LAN ports, and our power port. And I think this is interesting. Um, normally you would expect this to have some kind of a wall wart, or this would have some sort of a wall wart on it, uh, and it doesn't. It's got internal power management, and that's interesting. Um, I guess that's really all there is here. But of course, uh, we've looked at B-Link devices in the past, and this 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 tab right here is very telltale of, of some of the stuff that we've seen. But in order to get in there, uh, we're gonna have to pop these four uh, corner pieces out. So 
so that's that. And then hopefully, oops, hopefully this screwdriver. Yay, that screwdriver's gonna work. Um, and you know what I noticed? This doesn't even tell us on the packaging. Oh, it's got the N100. See, this, this is why I'm not a good tech YouTuber. Because I looked at it, I read it out loud, and I was like, I don't think they told us what the specs were. When they very clearly did, and I, uh, I am just too dumb sometimes. So, a couple more screws here. So, there we go. And then, I love these pull tabs. Oh, that's great. Okay, so, um, right here, this is gonna be our power management. Maybe I should zoom in a little bit on this so you guys can see better. That's literally why I've got this overhead set up the way I do. There we go, that should be better. So, we've got a little power, our, our, our power supply is actually internal. I really, I love that, I really do. I know that it takes up more space inside, but um, having, having all these wall warts just takes up so much room. I love what they've done here. Um, we've got our CPU there, obviously. Hey pal, you just blowing from stupid town? And then we've got uh, some uh, DDR4 SODIM, uh, 3200 megahertz, 1.2 volts. That's our 16 gigs of RAM. And I'm pretty sure that because this is an N series chip uh, powering it, that, um, that we're only gonna have one channel for memory. Um, so if you wanna do a six, or from a 16 to 32 gig upgrade, it's gonna have to be a single DIMM. Let's verify that, just pop this out real quick. Um, yeah, just, just the one channel there for memory. So uh, yeah, that's, that's kind of unfortunate, honestly, but it is what it is. Let's just go ahead. And we're gonna take this, this heat sink off of there. We're gonna put that screw over there. I'm gonna put that one, this one out like so. Okay, interesting. This is just a cooling block for the two NVMe slots that are right there. Um, we've, got a, we've got a control board there, but we've got one storage, uh, one NVMe here with 512 gigs. There's another one right next to it. Uh, this says M.2 PCIe 3.0 by one. And this one, the one that's already in there, I know, again, I apologize. Uh, M.2 PCI 3.0 by four. So you're gonna get four lanes of traffic here and one lane of traffic there. They've done a lot of really cool things with, with this product. I, um, I'm actually really excited to get this thing plugged in and, and boot it up for the first time just to see what the performance is like. So let's go ahead and do that now. So it was shortly after I got to the desktop that I started growing concerned. The CPU usage was all over the place for about six full minutes while the desktop settled in. Now this wasn't just the first time the OS booted. I ran into this several times. And once the CPU settled down, I waited a bit just, just to make sure. And then I decided to run Windows Update. And this is where things went from confusing to frustrating. Every time I would run Windows Update, the CPU would max out at 100% for most of the duration of the updates. So again, like I mentioned earlier, I reached out to B-Link about this, and each time I reached out, I was met with a bit of resistance, and they would tell me things like, the CPU usage during testing was normal. As for the Windows Update, it initially showed 100% usage, but then returned to normal after some time. Now, I don't necessarily disagree that this was the case on their end, and I tried to reiterate that this was happening each time I would run Windows Update, and the CPU usage being at 100% would last far longer than I'd ever experienced with any other devices that I had tested. And their response to me was, our engineers have conducted multiple tests and have not encountered the issue that you mentioned of prolonged CPU usage reaching 100% for over an hour. So at this point, I nearly just gave up. I offered to send the device back and just forego the review entirely, but they wanted me to ship the device back to China and then they would reimburse me for the shipping once they had received the device. So I just sat on it and thought about what to do next. So fast forward to this morning, well, at the time of writing this script anyway, uh, I decided to record the entire process from the time I booted the machine until the latest rounds of updates were complete. Once I powered on the machine, it was, again, about six minutes until the CPU had settled down to an idle. It was actually a bit more than that, but the system uptime reported about six minutes in the task manager, so we're just gonna go with that number. Now, once the CPU settled in, as I mentioned earlier, I started Windows updates. The update that was available was Windows 11 23H2. Based on my research, that update is anywhere from five to six gigs in size. 
Now look, I've got a symmetrical one gig fiber connection, so the download size and speed are not an issue. Now that said, the 23H2 update took more than two hours to install, and the CPU stayed between 90 and 100% utilization basically the entire time. Now I'll have a link in the video description of that entire update process if you wanna take a look at that two and a half hour video for yourself. Now what actually did surprise me about the CPU utilization being so high for so long was that the fan inside was really nearly silent and the device itself was only warm to the touch. So their cooling solution really is pretty solid for this device. Now, once the updates were done, I was able to return to normal tasks like scrolling Reddit, checking my internet speed, watching YouTube, that sort of thing. The device was fine. It was actually pretty snappy in its ability to jump from one page to another, and I didn't encounter any other issues with light online work. So look, I understand that reinstalling the operating system may have fixed the issues that I was running into, and maybe the way this one specific drive was imaged was the issue in and of itself. But from an everyday consumer perspective, spending a few hundred bucks on a PC only to have it do what I've documented would be super frustrating because not everybody knows how to troubleshoot these issues and not everyone would know how to explain or demonstrate what was going on. Look, I'm no genius <laughs> as we've discovered, but I know how to communicate the issues I've encountered and I still couldn't get the help I needed from the company when I had a direct line to them. I very much got a, well, it worked on our end response and they just put the ball back in my court, which again, from the general consumer perspective would be daunting, it would be overwhelming and very, very frustrating. Now taking a bit of a, a side path here, something else that I want to mention about these mini PCs, other than how they have saturated the market and now you can just license hardware and throw your name on it and call it yours is this. Most of the marketing material for these devices is bad, like not necessarily aesthetically, but they don't give the details that consumers want or need to know when making a purchasing decision. Using the EQ13 as an example, but understanding that this isn't just a B-Link issue, is that their product specifications image or page or whatever has the dimensions of the device, it has CPU specifications, it talks about the integrated graphics, the size of the NVMe drives and how much RAM is in it, and that's great. But they don't tell you much about the HDMI other than it's 4K60. What version or revision? It's got USB-C? Cool, is it the same USB 3.2 Gen 2 as the other USB ports, or is it something different? I've got no idea, as it's very often that the marketing pages for these types of devices skip over these details. And these may be little things to some people, but other people want to know this stuff before they make a purchasing decision. I really feel like these companies need to do a better job at, at actually letting us know the general specifications of each of these different things. So here's, here's the thing, right? You can get one of these EQ13s online anywhere from like 259 to 299, but I've seen flash sales that have them as low as 209. And whether or not that's a good deal is going to be up to you. If I was going to buy this as a desktop operating system setup to run Windows, I'd probably say it's a bad deal. If, however, you wanted to pick this up as a low powered self-hosting server, maybe running Docker or, or Casa OS or Open Media Vault or something like that, then maybe it's worth the cash. Again, it's got two one gig LAN ports and two NVMe storage slots in it. So maybe for a headless server, this might not be a bad option. Overall, that decision is going to be up to you and how you want to use the device. With that said, if you wanna pick one of these up for yourself, I will have some links in the description where you can jump over to Amazon or over to B-Link's direct website and buy one from either of those places. So there, there you go. There's my experience with the EQ13 from B-Link. And again, my experience may have been an isolated incident and I genuinely hope it was. Uh, Tech Hut and Techno Tim have both covered this device in some capacity. I'll put links to their videos in the video description if you want to check that out. Um, I just wanted to share my experience with this device to to demonstrate that just because I'm a product reviewer and, and that sort of thing doesn't necessarily mean that I'm going to get pick of the litter when it comes to these devices. So do me a favor, uh, if you liked the video, don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. If you wanna support the channel and at least sometimes get early access to my content, but always access with no ads, you can head over to Patreon and sign up for as little as a dollar a month. But with that said, I think I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up this video. Again, I wanna thank you guys for spending a few minutes of your day with me today, and I'll talk to you in the next video.